Hi, I'm Spencer Krauss. I've been building robots for over 20 years. In that time, I've seen a lot of interesting things, and I've heard a lot of interesting stories. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is a place where my peers and I can relax, have a drink, and talk about some of the crazier things we've seen at work and some of the experiences we've had that have gotten us to where we are today. Subscribe today to join the collaboration. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Jason Iquanomu. Uh, Jason is the CTO at Tronics 3D and my co-founder at Tension Dynamics. Jason, welcome to the pod. Thanks, man. Really, really thank you for having me here. It's, you've got some really cool guests. Well, thanks. Yeah, no, I appreciate you making it on. I'm glad you could uh, come out of your shell and onto my podcast. Yeah, uh, out of my shell is actually pretty accurate because I do kind of hide in the back. I kind of just I kind of just do stuff. So for people listening, like Jason is the evil genius that came up with the design for Tension Dynamics actuator and he is one of the smartest best engineers I know. Um uh, super intelligent guy. Doesn't like dealing with people as much. <laughs> so. That's not a entirely accurate. All right, then what's what is it actually? I don't think that it's intelligence. I think a lot of what I do um, and a lot, I think a lot of it, what anyone can do this, we actually have a client and this is a really, this is a, a kind of a weird tangent. Um, we've got oh, a I client. Guess a lot weird tangents. Yeah. So we have, we have a client, uh, they're really cool. A client at Tronics. A client at Tronics. And they do, uh, they, they do, they're mapping the brain. And so it's not the project specifically. That's, that's amazing. I like it. It's really cool what they're doing. Uh, one of their principles, uh, we, we, we've talked extensively outside of, of the scope of the project about, you know, one of the things he, he's really interested in, that's blind sight. And I, I literally just yesterday saw a video about like uh, how blind sight is actually really related to aphantasia. I apologize, but what is blind sight? Blind sight is when you have brain damage in such a way that your eyes are no longer connected to your um, your, your visual cortex. So you can't see things consciously right so you don't know what you're huh. seeing so you can see but you can't process the images right but your your brain is still connected to these things um with but not directly certain parts of your brain are directly connected interesting like a lot of the old like you know lizard brain shit that's connected like those are connected it's like if someone's coming at you you can dodge it exactly but you're not gonna be that able is, to figure out what their hand looks no, no, like no no that is exactly how they do the testing is is with you know uh, intercepting um, intercepting things that are on like a vector towards them or away from them. Uh, but but they can use motor controls in ways that they don't have vision to do so, right? So you can intercept a ball that's being tossed at you or you can grab something that you cannot perceive. That's interesting. Yeah, so blind sight is, is sort of now like, any, anyway, so we've talked about that uh, with with this client of mine, and well, I uh, want to understand what it is, but so yeah, well, it's that it's it's that you can't see consciously what you're going to be grasping at, but you can see it subconsciously. subconsciously. Well, you can you're reacting to its presence there at that point, right? Yeah, intuitively, I don't know what you would call that. It, it's going to be a reaction. Yeah. Okay. And and the reaction actually happens far quicker than you would react if you had the to think about it correct if you had yeah. if you had like conscious perception of something and then reacted to it like you would you wouldn't have that so you're you're at this like enhanced um th this enhanced ability to to react to things that you literally can't see consciously and so in the same vein and this is a weird tangent because like with aph aphantasia like i can't close my eyes and see anything what is aphantasia Aphantasia is like, uh, like if you close your eyes and, and, and you imagine the image of like, say, I don't know, your, your girlfriend or your mother or your wife's face or something, your, your, your daughter, you, you, you can see that. Yeah, I can right? see all that stuff. Yeah. You can see that. You can tell me what their eye color is. You can tell me what, like the shape of everything. I can see it, but I'm not great at it. Like, I don't know my mom's eye color if you ask me to picture it. Well, maybe you just haven't paid attention. Yeah, fair enough. But like, so that. That that it it is kind of like a, a graded scale. Like it's not entirely black and white that you have this vision or you don't. 
And so with this aphantasia, you find out that a lot of scientists end up having this. And, and, and so what happens is like you, you get these, these progressions of, uh, of like say a design or something and I, and I can, I can work with it in my head, but I can't do it consciously. And so when I'm working on something like complicated or anything like that, I don't think that I'm like, you said that I was intelligent and I'm, and I, I think that's incorrect. I think that's like a, like, sure. I'm, I'm like a clever guy. I, I'm, I'm fine, but I'm just a guy. I'm just a normal guy. I'm, I'm good at putting things together that, you know, I've, I've, I've reasonable memory. So I have a, a whole, a whole palette of colors I can work with and I can paint a picture with those that I can't see. Interesting. And so it comes out, you know, oftentimes it's work, it's worthwhile, but, but I think what, 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 uh, what really works well is that I've had such a, a really non-traditional introduction, non-traditional upbringing in engineering that gives me that, uh, a different perspective and gives me a different set of, uh, like when I set up a project, it's going to be, it's going to have a different set of goals and a different, different definition of the problem. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Robotics. If you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise, please consider hiring SKA Robotics. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. But yeah, so, okay, so you talked about um, a type of 3D printing where you ablate away polymer and then right. you Yeah, have to well, you don't it. ablate away the polymer. You're bonding the polymer to each other. You're melting a thermoplastic to another thermoplastic, and then you're going to sinter that out. So then you're ablating it when you sinter it. So when you sinter it out, it's gone. You, you fuck it off, and then you just have this metal, and you have this... This, this like well-proven metal injection molded metal and you have this good shrink profile that is a 3D, that is consistent. So the shrink profile is known, so you just account for that when you print the original article. Bam, yes. And uh, so you have this good like shrink profile and, and, and that's actually the magic is that you have this 3D shrink profile that is consistent in three dimensions. And so you can place a part in any way without having to do any so it's just a scaling issue like you make it like a little bigger yes and that is in the that is in like the production side so if you have to scale something like in the x y and z differently in the x and the y versus the y and the z and versus the z and the x like it's you know, all math we know how to do it is but then if you you if you have these fucked up problems you're going to have like oh well a wall of this thickness has a different sort of shrink ratio and this wall thickness has a different shrink ratio with this a characterization issue at that point but you're saying that's not a correct. problem with this technology correct and so it, it is a problem with any other like you you can't characterize like that in software yet like we're not good enough yet our so so software is the biggest problem we have just make ai do it yeah just <laughs> just it's just an ai issue so as a, as a mechanical guy, like I do, like I can solve mechanical problems. The software problems, why can't we solve them? I'm not a software guy. So I have a hard time understanding why we can't solve some of these problems. Like why can't I have five robot arms working at the same time? Like, yeah, it's calculation. It's, it's I reverse. I think you can have five robot arms working at the same time. On the same thing? I think, I think we figured out how to do that. Can we do six or is that too much? I don't fucking know. But like, I mean, there's, there's definitely software and demos that exist where you can block off like chunks of space to get like another arm in there. But I guess you're right. It's one arm working. It blocks off its area and then another arm comes in and does its thing. Right. Yeah. And all the time. And, and, and we should be able to do these things with software, but like, I pause it to software engineers. Like why is software always the bottleneck? Like, why can't we go through, like we can make hardware to do all kinds of crazy things. And that should be the hard part. It should be the hard part doing this hardware. Whereas the software would like, we're telling it to do something. We're telling have you, it to, have you written software at all or I have, I've yeah. written firmware. I've written like, yes. Okay. Um, and so I've worked up people. No, uh, 
so the last project I worked on software wise, I was reading like a whole, like it was, a, it's like a thousand page CPU document about like, you know, getting the exact timing problem. There are errors in the documentation of that CPU. Sure. Yeah. It's a thousand pages. And the like fucking that, peripherals on it. Right. So there's like, we, we ran into issues with like documentation issues with like how you address the specific actions going on with the specific peripheral in this specific instance. And they were goddamn wrong. Sure. Yeah. It happens all the time. It shouldn't. The data sheet should be God. Going back to humans, like we're, we're all, uh, we're all just humans. And, uh, we all have very similar interests and similar things that give us satisfaction. So w when you come to a problem, your solution, my solution, they're all going to want to address the same things, right? And you may not know where this is going, but it goes back to where we started as far as like finding a solution and finding like uh, being innovative, right? Like we're all gonna look for the same solution. We're gonna look for something that, that satisfies what's deep down in our physicality of our brain. But the physicality of our brain, as we talked about, is defined by our upbringing, by what's going on, by like our nutrition, our, our, our experiences, all that shit. Like we're, we're going to, we're going to be defined by that, but if we can, if we can appeal to each other, we can sell that. So Interesting. If I, yeah. If I can come up with a solution that appeals to me in my heart with my upbringing and my, you know, genetic brain blueprint, and it appeals to you as well for some reason whatever maybe it appeals to a different part of your brain than what it what it what it what it uh, triggers in me maybe that maybe that thing is our connection is is what is what it does like it is uh maybe that little uh little satisfaction that our brains get out of it at, at, at different levels or different different places so a product is going to be yeah it's going to be the same thing that, that that i value that you value and so we can take that and turn it into a product or turn it into an innovation that actually has legs right like if you don't believe in something that i come up with it's not going to go anywhere. Well, I'm not the end-all be-all of what's going to go anywhere, but... Well, I say you. I say you as in society, right? Like, if society doesn't believe that I have a solution that they they want, then it's bullshit. It doesn't matter if it works. Like, it's all about a belief. It's all about that feeling at the end of the day of, yes, this this is this is a need. This is something in our brains that was sated. That, 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 that was satisfied like that that's the that's the innovation right there yeah. Uh, but yeah like we're all our brains are they start off in the same genetic place they have sometimes very similar maps that they're laid over innovation it has to be a cell like you can't you can't take something new that people don't want. If you actually want to, want to, want to, uh, a very good example of this, you have to look at a, a different passion of mine, which is uh, uh, motorcycles. And so in here, you can have a very dynamically uh, capable system that's better than what's out there, right? It's, you know, it's, it's dynamically better than a, than, than a, than a fork system, right? You've got a hub center steer or, you know, did, your, your axle system can be different. Like they're different styles. I don't know this terminology, but I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm specifically being like vague about it. Like, don't worry about it. We'll just say hub center. All right. You have a, 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 a funny front end, right? On a motorcycle, you've got this, this non fork suspension. You saw the bikes out front, right? Sure. Well, I they mean, had I didn't get a good look at how the 
steering well, they, works, they've, but... they've got forks and they've got steering and you, you steer it directly and it like one when you're on the brakes there's a lot of dive there's there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of dynamics going on dynamically there's a better system and it's a system that we use on cars all the time it, it, it's well known the dynamics are well known there are many reasons we don't use them and why they're not like there there've been a bunch of attempts on motorcycles yeah there've been a bunch of attempts to get them like to change and they never do like there's always like one model or another model like you've got the Bomona Tessie you've got the Virus you've got the GTS 1000 you've got these these bikes that that were you know they're good but they they didn't convince anybody they didn't hit those those passions in the brain that were like, oh, well, this is what we really need. Yeah. The reason why all of these failed, I think, is a dynamic issue, whereas they didn't feel right. Like when you're riding it, they just didn't have the right feel. Interesting. And so using some of the similar uh, things we're doing in tension dynamics, I actually want to use the same principles of like the capstan drive and stuff driving this this bike interesting and i think honestly that's going to be the most passionate thing that i can do that other people can feel is going to be like designing a bike and making it i'm probably going to just make it open source i'm probably just going to go and be like oh this is the fucking you bike use the I, capstan drive for steering yeah interesting absolutely yeah the capstan drive with the veteran I yeah. think that's going to be, I'm going to, so if, when I do this, I'm just going to open source it. I'm not, I don't find a, I don't see a way to, I don't want to be a motorcycle manufacturer. I want to just make it like, I, like I want to, I want, I want to advance motorcycling, right? I want to do better. I think we can do better. So what are, I mean, okay. So like tension dynamics, let's, let's talk about that a little bit since we're both doing it. Like, you know, it's, it's an exciting business. It's a new thing. I mean, we probably should give listeners a little bit of that. So, um, how do you come oh. up with the idea for this new type of actuator? Oh my God. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, super good. Like, yeah, this, um, so I'm poor, right? And I don't think you are anymore. Like, I think you've, you've earned money and you've, you, you're we not, don't, we pay our guys more than we pay ourselves right I mean, now. Same here. But like, that's the part of having a business. Yeah. Uh, um, sooner or later I won't be poor. But right. So anyway, when I came up with this like 10 years ago, I'm poor. I want a motion simulator rig. I look at what's available and they have these, you know, Stuart platforms that are all they're hydraulics for the like real high power ones. And they're they're like uh, electric for the, 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 the shitty ones. And they, and they fucking suck. These things aren't good. They, they've got. You look at what the military wants for helicopter specs and it's like these are crap. Like anything that you get from an actuator is like not gonna get not gonna get you, you there. I mean, in terms of like dynamic response, in terms of like response, in terms of like power density, in terms of like you know, if you're looking at like degrees well, so per with second the of helicopter, rotation. it would just be like you know jerk and acceleration. Correct. Yeah. 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 You're, you the the kind of accelerations you can hit just they're not there. You know you need you need you need hundreds of kilowatts to hit that with, with anything that's going to be heavy enough. So I'm, I'm in composites. And the reason I got in composites was because back when I was really poor, I was like, well, and, and, and I, like, I grew up without a lot of money. And so like we, we came up and I was like, what can I do that's going to get me into a high level of, uh, of parts without like a high buy-in like i don't need to get like an okuma cnc or some shit like that to get like really high quality parts what does one of those cost you know you need 150 to a million dollars right 150k right, and so like i don't have a million dollars i can't borrow a million dollars um I, I couldn't even get student loans man like i was fucked like <laughs> we couldn't do that. so we um i i thought i was like so so i went into composites because composites i could make like really high-end things with like really good handmade molds or I could hire out some bit of CNC work and get, like, uh, you know, make the rest of the mold right, myself. So with a low cost, um, high quality part that I could make, 
of anything and you, you can even see it like my backpack I, i've got these like uh like yeah that's pretty cool look at these fucking cases right you can run that over with a car i literally have run it over with my car <laughs> I ran over with my car like 15 years ago. This literal case. This case is like 15 years old. Like it doesn't look it, but it's it's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's carbon fiber and shit. Like like really good like fiber ratios and stuff. Anyway, so I was like, yeah, I can make really good high quality parts with carbon fiber. And then I was like, well, what else can I do? And so I'm like, okay, so think about what's available. What can we do? And where Where's the strength and where can I cut the cost? And I just like basically distribute the whole thing and like look at it and be like, okay, I can, I can do it all in tension. Like, like ropes, strings, cables. That's where I need to go. And I find out, well, okay, well, let's go down that road. And I find out what, what's available. Well, nothing really. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, come back to it a couple of years later and I'm like, oh, this shit veteran. That's pretty dope. There's no. There's was no, that new at the time from the last time you looked at it? Or it, it was a research material. It? Okay. It, was, it was like a research material back then. So I was looking at Vectrin. I was like, oh, Vectrin has no creep. Holy shit. And so I go through all these things. I look at all the specs and I'm like, okay. I didn't I didn't order any Vectrin because it was like it was like hundreds of dollars per yard at the time still. And so back then I was like, okay, I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to make it. Like this is going to get cheaper. Overall, like it'll get cheaper. It'll get cheaper over the years. Like I'll find a time when it when it comes to like a cost point where I can actually make these things. Um, because you have to understand, like um, I'm not that forward looking. I'm like, how much does it cost now? Yeah, we, everything costs things. Like you have to look at things from a cost perspective whenever you're making anything. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna, like that's the whole point of 3D printing. Like it, it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't cost effective. Like, yeah, it's time effective a lot of times, but it's sometimes it's not even t- cost effective now. Like, yeah, we're, we're printing big things, but it's like, eh, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've like two days ago, uh, head of an, in, an injection molding company up north over in Erie, uh, we have an existing relationship with them. He didn't actually know it at the time. He ordered some parts from us. This part was like the cap, the top to a five gallon bucket that had like some special features on it. And he 3D printed this thing. And it was like $400 for this thing. And I was like, I looked at it. I was like, damn, I look, you know, on the counter, I'm like, I'm like looking at this part and this, this, like this, uh, this, 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 this worksheet that comes up. And it's like, I was like, wow, look at that. That's fucking expensive. Right. And he's like, oh, this is such a good value. He <laughs> thought it was amazing. He came down. He talked with us. I showed him like what we're doing and uh, showed him some other parts we're working with. And I was like, we're actually working with you in a, like adjacently in a different way through different clients. Like uh, you don't even know it, but we're actually working with you still. Like you're, you're a plastics manufacturer that, you know, we have clients that are working with you through. Um what a relationship, though. Small world, yeah. It's a small world, and, and honestly, well, that SK has worked with Tronics too. Yeah, and, so. and you've probably worked with Tronics before you knew us, even. Well, you think? I think you did. Yeah, probably. How do you figure? Well, it's just like there's only so many MGF manufacturers in the in in, in the country, and you probably worked with us before you knew Mike and I. But you've only been around. Two and a half years. Oh, you're saying the company was around longer before? Yeah, before Mike and I bought it. Yeah. You, you may have even That's worked with possible. them. Possible. I mean, yeah. Mike did. Yeah. Mike worked with Tronics before we bought Tronics. That's interesting. Yeah, you're right. So it's, it's like it's uh, if, if you look at the, the the number of manufacturers that actually do MJF like as a commercial thing with added value things, there are very few of them. Um, and uh, actually, if you I, I, I don't know if this is cool to talk about, but the... Uh, don't talk about it. <laughs> well, Zometry, Zometry's value has been just tanking lately. Interesting. They, so Zometry has been a, at the... They've been at the forefront of this race to the bottom. Oh, I see. And uh, they don't... Zometry don't own any equipment. 
Well, it's it's like you uh, you send it apart and then you bid it out to like random people with machines and then the cheapest price gets the bid basically. Basically, uh, it could be it could be that some guys like oh I'm having a bad day I'm gonna drop my prices by like you know five percent ten percent or something and then you get the bid. But uh, a lot of times it's people that just figure out ways to cheap out on shit. And it could be, could be, could be they're they're filling your infill with uh, nothing. W- with yeah, just not using. It, it just it's just powder that doesn't have any fusing agent or anything. Who knows? Is that just to save money on fusing agent or? I don't want to call anybody out. <laughs> Look, well, you are. <laughs> it's the thing. Yeah, but you just said zometry. <laughs> So. But um, I said zometry's value, like on the stock market, has yeah. been really. It's been, it's been something. If you want to watch it, it's something. Take a look. If you look at the stock market, they've fucking dumped. Like their their valuation has really gone down. Interesting. And like we're not publicly traded, we don't care about that. But I mean. Mike's interested in the stock market. I mean, it's a data point, right? Like, I think I'm, it's a, it's a I'm confidence. interested in the t- stock market because, like, I have customers that are publicly traded, and so I want to understand their financials yeah. in order to understand the risk profile well, of doing you business gotta, with them. And, and it's a confidence thing with them. It's like, what's my confidence level with this, with this company? Is it high? Is it low? Are they going to be around? And it's like, hmm. Um, Maybe they won't be. But I mean, that's surely good for Tronics if they're not. Not really, because we're not we're not direct competitors. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think we compete directly because uh, they 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 don't actually offer the options. The stuff that makes Tronics pretty amazing is that we care. We we'll make like really high quality. We'll, we we care about like the build orientation. We care about like the the. Uh, your your parts getting like uh, inserts in the correct orientation, the correct depth. We care about you know uh, I- if you're hitting tolerances. Your higher quality. Yeah, we 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 give a shit. Well, that's why I use you. <laughs> yeah, cause that's why SK Robotics uses. We're you gonna guys. give you uh, we're we're gonna give you a good part, and um, like I don't want to I don't want to hit that sales pitch thing, but why not? I, I guess where in t- the doll did the salesperson oh. touch you? Fair, <laughs> right, right, right on my dick. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I, I it, it's an interesting place to be right now. Is there anything you want to plug on the way out? I mean, buy tension dynamics actuators would be one thing that buy tension dynamics. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh, if you if you want to tension dynamics is so close to my heart. Like it's it's a thing. Like if you need hexapods, meaning a Stewart platform. Yeah, if you need a st- Stewart platform or something, like there ain't nothing better. Like all that other shit, it ain't it ain't shit. <laughs> uh, but but for real, for for real for real, like like yeah. That, that tension dynamics has like the Stuart platform. Like we, we we got that shit. Um. So that's because we have like a better ratio of extended compress. We can hit better angles at the top of the Stuart. Platform. We can hit. We can hit better. It's cheaper. It's like, dude. Like there's so can, much more. Like the efficiency and the. And it is seriously, just the uh, the 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 extended to compression ratio, like that is just it right there. If you don't need that, if you need more force, like these fucking things can kick. They can fucking kick. Like absolutely kick. I can get you a fiber, and that fucker's good to like twenty, fifty. <laughs> it's so strong you don't even know like I gotta run FEA to find out if we can make metallics to catch up with that shit <laughs> <laughs> meaning the frame around the thing so. yeah yeah absolutely yeah alright yeah. well Jason thanks for coming on let's do it again soon dude like I mean we, we hang out all the time so like yeah. uh, it, it's cool to be with this podcast and holy shit 
that whiskey is strong as fuck. Well, we did just chug half a bottle, so um, I'm going to be Ubering home. I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Cheers, man. Thanks for joining us today. If you've made it this far, chances are you'll like other episodes too. Collaborative with Spencer Kraus is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Subscribe today to get notified when the latest episodes release and support the channel. Collaborative with Spencer Kraus is sponsored by SKA Robotics. If you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise, please consider hiring SKA Robotics. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. Thanks again and see you on the next one.